the recipients of the 1998 National Medal of Technology. The team of Kenneth L. Thompson and Dennis M. Ritchie from Bell Laboratories Lucent Technology for co-inventing the Unix operating system and the C programming language. Dennis Ritchie was by no means a public figure, but his work in computer science had a major impact on the development of the digital age. He was the co-creator of the operating system Unix, and he wrote a new computer language, C. Together, they paved the way for portable computing. Dennis Ritchie was born in New York State. He studied physics at Harvard, and then followed his father into Bell Labs, home to many technology breakthroughs. When a large venture to create an operating system failed, Dennis worked quietly and persistently with a colleague to find a simpler solution. Bill Thompson is a broadcaster on technology matters. The things that he worked on have, have changed the world for all of us. Essentially, he's one of the people who created the modern world by developing both an operating system, that is, the software that runs on a computer that turns it into a computer, the thing that tells it how to work, and a programming language both of those are now central to almost every piece of computing equipment that you might touch. They make the internet work, they make the World Wide Web work, they make your iPhone and Android phone work, they make this shiny Macintosh computer that I've got here work underneath. A lot of this derives from the work that Ritchie and his colleagues did in the 1960s and 1970s. One of his colleagues at Bell Labs and co-author of the C programming Bible was Professor Brian Kernigan. The Unix operating system was a joint effort between Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. When they first came to Bell Labs, they had worked for a year or two on a project called Multics, which was a very large cooperative effort between MIT, General Electric, and Bell Labs to build an operating system to control one of these very large machines. That project was cancelled, or at least Bell Labs withdrew from it, and this left Ken and Dennis with nothing to do but a taste for trying to build an operating system that would be comfortable and friendly to use. And what came out of that was this operating system called Unix, which was very small, but very clean, and very elegant. This is like saying, oh, um, you know, there's no desk in this office, so I'm going to grow myself a forest, <laughs> chop down some trees, build a desk out of it. It really was starting from scratch. It was an enormous intellectual achievement. And they did this in a way which expressed certain principles about how operating systems should run that were, that were quite unusual at the time. And then he created a programming language, the C programming language, which was used to improve and rewrite Unix. I got my first job as a programmer in 1984, and the first thing that arrived on my desk was a copy of Kernigan and Ritchie, the C programming language, the book written by Dennis Ritchie and his colleague Brian Kernigan about C. So together, Unix and C are the two pillars on which much of modern computing is built, we just don't see them, because the people who see the C programming language are the programmers. I don't think that Bell Labs ever realized, uh, certainly in the first couple of decades, the importance of the work that was going on there. I think that the technical community realized the significance of what was created starting at the time when the Internet began to spread. And the Internet spread fairly widely within a technical community in call it the 1980s. And then, of course, the Internet became a much more widespread phenomenon with the invention of the browser. The World Wide Web, the work of Sir Tim Berners-Lee in early 90s, spreading use of C and Unix over essentially the whole world. Father of the World Wide Web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. The big lesson about Unix and C is the simplicity and the minimalist style of it all, that, that uh, everything was done with a small number of characters and the essence of the design was to make it just clean so that you don't remember just the minimum amount. Would the World Wide Web have happened without Unix and C? Well, <laughs> I think that's difficult to say. What I can say is that I found it very convenient to use the next machine, which Steve Jobs had produced, and that was a Unix machine. And since then, the simplicity of the Unix file system has been a consistent theme. Well, what we wanted to preserve was not just a good programming environment in which to do programming, but a system around which a community could form fellowship to encourage close communication. Steve Jobs has just died, been described as a genius, accolades from everywhere around the world. How important was Dennis Ritchie 
in comparison? Well, as a computer scientist myself, I'd say he was more important. Apple and Steve Jobs put the gloss on something, but actually what's underneath it is computing. Dennis was very much a, a private person and absolutely not in any sense a self-popularizer. He did not ever, so far as I can tell, blow his own horn on anything. He was generous to a fault with credit for other people who built on his work. Steve Jobs, by contrast, was a consummate public person, and he really understood what it was that would make products appealing and attractive to a very wide group of people. So it's a great loss to have those two people die within a period of just a few weeks, but they were very different in what they did and the way they presented their work to the world. And Steve Jobs obviously presented spectacularly well. And Dennis, I think by personal choice, basically did not present in that sense. He was content to let the work stand for itself. Dennis Ritchie, who has died aged 70.